Good morning. This is Jennifer Rush, First Baptist Church, and we are continuing our uh, stepping forward of our pastor's uh, a devotional that he wrote 39 days to um, of a walk through Ephesians just to help us to, to learn and grow together. Um, so he wrote this book and our church has been going through it. And so now we're doing it uh, here on, on, on uh, the Internet. And uh, so we are on day 11 now. Uh, the title being Explanation of This Union. And uh, basically, it's talking about the, uh, the fact that, um, you know, we had the, the Jews and the Gentiles. The Jews were the people that God created uh, to be the ancestors, etc., to be the people that would, uh, Christ would be born into the world through them to bring salvation in mankind. And, uh, and then everybody else, we're Gentiles, and I'm, I'm sure you really love my hands flying. I'm going to try to control them. Um, I apologize for that. So this is uh, this this is what we're talking about here. Now I I went over to um, we're, we're doing Ephesians 2, 14 through 18 is what we're looking at, and I went on over to the Amplified because I just thought that um, it, it fits it in better of pointing out Jews and Gentiles, etc. So I'm going to read from the Amplified Version. Um, I'd like to encourage any of you. Uh, I like to, I pretty much have a favorite version that I like to read, but um, there's, uh, there's times when I want to go to other ones. And, uh, and I like BibleGateway.com, BibleGateway.com. Also, I have a little app by Bible on my phone, and that way I can switch around. I can look and see for what different versions say and when I'm studying a verse. So for this one, I chose the Amplified. For he himself, speaking of Christ, is our peace and our bond of unity. He who made both groups, Jews and Gentiles, into one body and broke down the barrier, the dividing wall of spiritual antagonism between the two groups, by ab abolishing in his own crucified flesh the hostility caused by the law with its commandments contained in ordinances which he, which he satisfied, so that in himself he might make the two into one new man, thereby establishing peace, and that he might reconcile them both, Jew and Gentile united, into one body to God through the cross, thereby putting to death the hostility. And he came and preached the good news of peace to you, to the Gentiles who were far away, and peace to those Jews who were near. For it is through him that we both have a direct way of approach in the Spirit to the Father. So I'd just like to just pray for a moment and join me. Lord, I just ask you to teach us through your word and through um, this uh, devotional that our pastor has created to just guide us into a new understanding, just to take away one aha point that we hadn't thought about before. And I thank you for this time together, Lord. So the unity uh, and the peace of Christ, when it, when it says one new man, it's, it's actually talking about the new man as in mankind and so this is the the body of christ the church the jewish people lived under the law of god while the gentiles uh, who had their own gods and their own commandments as a whole didn't have anything to do with the law of god and therefore did not try to obey it kind of like if you don't think it applies to you you wouldn't try to obey it these two groups lived almost uh, entirely separate lives. They had nothing in common other than the fact that they were human. This separate life caused much hostility. But God wanted peace between the two because they were his creation and he loved them. All of them. Doesn't matter Jew, Gentile, etc. In order for peace to come, God would have to render the law inoperative. In other words, to not have impact on us. Um, I think of uh, 
you know, the, the law is impossible. God's law, God's law, God's law is perfect. We are not perfect. We cannot keep the law. The law is there to sh as a measuring stick to show us how far we fall away from God's perfect will. And the thing is, is that everything that's in the law is good for us. If the, the, the reason you want to try to live as close to that as you can, you know, at least for the Jews and then in the New Testament, not so much that, but, but nonetheless, these are good, healthy laws. These are good for us. I was thinking this morning as I was looking at this, um, wouldn't you like to live where there's no lying, there's no cheating, there's no murder, etc.? Those are all things that, that are in the like the Ten Commandments. So what God is presenting is what's perfect in that law, which, of course, we can't keep. But I think it actually gives us a picture of what it's going to be like to live in heaven, where it is all perfect. So God wanted peace between the Jews and the Gentiles because we are all a creation and he's a deep love for us. In order for that peace to come, God would have to render the law inoperative. And to do that, he would have to take a drastic step. At the cross, he did just that. He caused the law to be, quote, out of order for those who were in Christ, whether they're Jew or Gentile. In Christ, the law would no longer be a dividing wall between the two. Romans 10, 4. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. I kind of chuckled at that out of order. Um, in this section of scripture, God shows two reasons why he made a way to end the enmity or the hostility between the Jews and the Gentiles. The first is that the Lord wanted to create in himself a new man. God wanted all of those who call upon Jesus as to be part of one body, one church. The law divided the two, but here in Christ would be unity because of his grace. And we saying one new man, it's like the Jews is a, are a group of people, the Gentiles are a whole bunch of groups of people, but they're like everybody else. And, but we're, he doesn't want any divisions with us. Creating the Jews was was a necessary thing because we needed a lineage for Christ and we needed them to be trying to live by what heaven is like so that they could, so they could be the ones that brought Christ in the world, that God brought him into the world through them. Um, the second reason God opened the door for hostility to end was to cause the believing Jew and the believing Gentile to be equally at peace with God. The Jews cannot keep the law. No human being can keep the law. Uh, if, if you want to read the book of Galatians in the New Testament, you'll find out in there he explains why he created the law. The, re, the law is a schoolmaster. It's to teach us why we need God. We can't be perfect not in this body. The Jews could not keep the law. The Gentiles did not care to, nor could they if they tried, because none of us could. And this made both groups enemies of God. But through the cleansing blood of Christ, those who accepted Jesus Christ as Savior are reconciled or made friendly with, with God. When there is peace with God because of faith in Jesus, there will be peace with one another also. Those found in the church the one body, the one man, can live in peace with one another and with God. No longer are we separate groups, but rather one because of the cross. We're no longer divided because of a law that we cannot measure up to. We are united by God's grace and mercy. God made this possible, not by anything we did, but only by what he did. He is the great peacemaker. He is the magnificent reconciler, and he is the loving one who cared enough to fix the hostility that both Jews and Gentiles had with one another and with God. It, it, we have the opportunity to have peace between Jews and Gentiles uh, for the most part. 
just like with the Gentiles. There's not that many, not that high a percentage that, uh, that accept Jesus as Messiah, as the Christ. Uh, Messiah, Christ, same word, two different languages. So, there's a challenge here. The law caused all kinds of problems with the Jews and the Gentiles and with God. Neither Jew nor Gentile could ever fulfill righteous, the righteous demands of the law, and those who thought they could exhibited a self-righteousness that pushed away everyone else. Sinful man could never live up to the law's perfection. But God came to earth and fixed this problem. Through faith in Christ, we are declared righteous. The law could never do this because it's designed to show us where we need to be. It couldn't help us get there. However, the blood of Christ takes us right to where we need to be. Think about what God did. It ought to rip the self-righteous attitude right out of us. The law caused hostility between Jews and Gentiles and between us and God. The son, on the other hand, made peace by shedding his blood. This is humbling to us. So we have, as always, a couple of questions or things, reflection to think about. So after we get done and after this is turned off, think about these two things for a little bit. What is God saying to me right now? That's the first one. The second is, how should I respond? There's one other thing that I want to, to mention. The, the law is the highest and best potential for man, but we are not able to keep it because it is perfect and we are not. Romans 3.23 tells us, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us, no exceptions. We have all sinned. If you go ahead and look back there at the Ten Commandments, you can decide. I remember stealing that piece of bubble gum when I was about six years old. I can remember things that I have done that I am ashamed of. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 says there's a payment that has to be made for this sin. That the wages of sin is death, which is eternal separation from God, eternal death. The wages of sin is death. That's the price you pay. That's what you earn for sin. Romans 5, 8 says, Christ showed us, showed his love for us by dying for our sin. And then Romans 10, 9 and 10 are the most important of the bunch here. If you, once you accept the fact that we've all sinned and that the wages of sin, there's a price to pay for the sin and that Christ showed his love for us by dying for our sin. Then we come to Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if we confess with our mouth, the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. Okay, so we're going to. Confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead. So with the heart, one believes and is justified. And with the mouth, one confesses and is saved. So if you have never asked Jesus into your heart, if you have never realized um, that you're a sinner who needs to be saved, if you think, hey, I, I'm, I'm interested in this, then you've accepted that you are a sinner and that there's a price to pay for that sin. So your choice is, do you want to pay for it yourself? Or do you want to accept the payment Christ has already made? So the payment Christ has already made was him dying on the cross for us. I mean, he came down into his own creation, put himself under the laws of his own creation, lived down here for 33 years, all to die for our sins. So if you are interested, you can pray and you can ask Jesus. You can tell him, I know that I'm a sinner. I know I need a savior. I ask you right now, Jesus, as I confess that I'm a sinner, and I ask you to come into my heart. I thank you for what you did for me on Calvary. 
please come into my heart right now and save me so that I can spend eternity with you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you did pray that prayer, I'd appreciate it if you'd go ahead and call the church. This is First Baptist Church in Benson. And if I had been clever, I would have had the phone number written down somewhere. Um, but I'm sure you can find it in the phone book. <laughs> but uh, Or leave a comment below, uh, either on the Facebook or on, on YouTube, and let us know. Uh, we would be happy and excited to get to celebrate with you. I pray you have a great day.